Why does Bob Brinker like the ACRI or ACRA Focus Fund? <clears throat> the ticker is A-K-R-E-X. So I'm working with a client today, and uh, he's got a good portfolio, a part of his portfolio. He's got A-K-R-E-X, the ACRA Focus Fund, uh, and then on one half of one of his IRAs, and the other half he's got the VDADX, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund. And I'm sitting there thinking, what, what the hell is the ACRA Focus Fund? And I said, how'd you find that? He goes, Bob Brinker. I said, really? And because when I was at Vanguard, Bob Brinker, he had written the, some newsletter for a long, long time. And this is back in the 90s. People would uh, would call in about, hey, Bob Brinker recommended this or Bob Brinker recommended that. And, uh, you know, I was like, all right, Bob Brinker. Anyway, long story short, I, you know, I became to know, I don't never met the guy or anything like that, but I've come to know of him and know him in terms of his writing and stuff. And, and I was always fond of it. Um, anyway, he had, I think he was big on the Ginny May. I can't remember if he was big on U.S. growth back then. I hope not. I just can't remember. But anyway, be that as it may. He had a pretty big following, and uh, and I think he did a lot real well uh, for many Vanguard investors, for sure. So as of interest, I said, I don't even know if Bob Brinker, A, is he still alive? B, is he still doing his newsletter? I don't know. And uh, so the guy I was talking to today said, yeah, he, he recommended this a number of years ago. And I said, well, let's look it up. So I looked it up. Let's take a gander. It's pretty interesting, actually. And this is from Morningstar, the ACRE or ACRE Focus Fund. Five-star ratings, so you always look at the ratings. I mean, I look, Morningstar, let's let's be honest. The five- and four-star ratings, the reason they're highly rated, generally speaking, is because they have low fees. All right, now, people say there's no methodology that says Morningstar higher-star ratings are better than lower-star ratings. I, I don't believe that, and the reason for that is because, generally speaking, the lower the expense rates, the higher the fund star is going to be. Not all the time, as this one is an example. All right, so this one uh, has, has only been around since 2009. I was like, I mean, you could not have picked a better time, by the way, to uh, start the fund, August 2009, right when the beginning of the uh, the, bear, the bull market started. But I was just like, why? And then it had an expense ratio. And I guess, you, see, let's see, is anything, look at this right here. Let's see, is anything jump out at you? Anything jump out at you for these names? Anything jump out at you? All right, so... Something jumped out at me very explicitly. We'll talk about here in just a second. So I said, okay, so these are the managers. Chris Charles Aker, uh, the namesake of the firm. Uh, we got, uh, he's got a million bucks in it. We got this guy, John Neff and Chris Cerrone. They all have over a million bucks in the firm. So we like to see that. Um, we'll come back to that in just a second. But I was like, that's interesting. So I said, okay, what is this fund? So it's got five-star rating. Uh, it's only been around since 2009. I said, oh, that seems kind of odd. I said, let's go to the, uh, I can't remember if it's a quote, but the expense ratio is 1.32. I was like, I don't get it. And then it's a large cap growth. I was like, so fee levels high, large cap growth. <laughs> that kind of scares me. 1.32 expense ratio, but it's got 14 billion in assets. I said, that's nuts. So I said, I've never heard that any, I've never heard of these people. Never heard of the fund. Got 14 billion assets, high fees, but it's got a five star rating for Morningstar and no yields at all. And then it's only got a third, a 3% portfolio turnover. So I'm liking that. I'm liking that, but I'm still thinking, why would Brinker recommend this? All right. Um, <laughs> so let's go back to people. And then I wondered, John Neff. And I said, so John Neff is a partner at Acura Capital Management. He worked for 10 years previously at William Barr & Company. Uh, he has a MBA. He went to uh, Colgate. He's got a BA in English from 1999, from 1994 probably, a Bull, uh, uh, Colgate uh, BA. So he's probably only two years older than me, uh, two years younger than me. He's probably 48. Uh, he got an MBA from the University of Chicago. So I was like, uh, okay. But the, here, John Neff. John Neff. Could he be the grandson of the great John Neff who ran the Vanguard Windsor Fund? I have to think that's probably the case. I did a, you know, I did about 30 minutes of research. I could not find out. I looked up everything on John uh, B. Neff and John H. Neff. John B. Neff is the guy from Windsor Fund. Uh, for, via Wellington, and John H. Neff would probably be his grandson, but uh, I couldn't find anything. John B. Neff, uh, he had two sons, one of which is dead, and, and then I just don't know. So I, 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 I'm not going to keep looking at it, but that name Neff is a big in the investment industry because of the Windsor Fund, John B. Neff. 
anyway, so then I started, okay, so let's take a look. I said, that's pretty interesting. So let's go back to quote. I started thinking, huh, let's look at the portfolio, shall we? And this is what made me, this is what makes it pretty cool, I think. Um, let's see what I'm trying to look for. We're trying to look for holdings here. Whoa, look at that. That's pretty cool. Hey, large growth oriented. Um, so I want to show you something if I can find it. Well, they changed all this in the Morningstar. Uh, kind of funny, actually. Um, I want to wide bone coverage, uh, historical sustainability, low carbon. I could care less about that. Holdings. Look at that. 20 stocks. That's it. <laughs> 20 stocks. 10 represent two thirds of the portfolio. 20 stocks, three stocks represent a third of the portfolio. Moody's, MasterCard, and, and American Tower. I don't even know what American Tower Corp is. Is that for cell phone towers? I have no idea. Look at that, man. None are the big ones except Adobe probably, but I don't know what Roper is, Constellation Software, but none are Amazon, Apple, Google or anything. Oh man, just look at that. 20 stocks. Um, Live Nation. I don't know why they're investing in that. That's weird. Dollar Tree, KKR. Uh, that's uh, you might be familiar with them. They're the uh, not hedge fund, the venture capital. I think. Uh, I don't know if it's venture capital or whatever it's called, but they're the uh, they're a group like that. But 20 stocks. That's it. That's it. There, I mean, that's what you want to see. If you're going to hire active management, yeah, you're you. Uh, so twenty. St that means they sell one stock every. They got twenty stocks. They sell a portfolio of uh, one stock a year. Would that be twenty five percent? They would sell one divided by twenty. Right, that's five. So they sell one stock every two years, essentially. That's it. Or buy and sell, if that makes sense. That's it. I mean, that's exactly what you want. No cap. There's not going to be any, I don't know about dividends. Yeah, there wasn't any dividends. There's no, so no capital gain, hardly, because they're only selling one stock every basically two years. I find that to be incredible. That's exactly what you want in a portfolio, is you want a firm that sticks to its guns through thick and thin. I thought that was way cool, man. I'm, look, am I saying invest in it? I no. You got to do what you got to do. So let's see what the minimum cost is to invest in this. Let's see if it. Uh, I have no idea. It's probably pretty high. I imagine. I can't imagine. Oh, it's only two thousand bucks. Look at that. I just uh, that's freaking awesome. I love it. I love it. I should you invest in it? Look, man, it's large cap growth. That scares the hell out of me. I'm not gonna lie. I've told you that a million times. But just it's uh. Let's take a look. Percentile. So 2011 is in the top percentile. 2010 is the 82nd percentile. I'm sure 2010 people are like, no, I don't want you because, you know, in 2010, they're like, we just we just started in 2000, the latter part of 2009. 2000, but then the next year is number one, 29, 18, 21, 18, 27, 31, 36, 28, 62. So year to day, 62. Oh, I just love it, man. That's fantastic. Anyway, something to think about if you're looking for growth and you're looking to take a gamble on a on a portfolio managers uh, who are sitting steady, this might be one you look at. I'm not saying buy it. I'm not saying buy it. I'm just saying this is what you want. This is literally active share the way it should be. Again, active share, my friends. They got 20 stocks. S&P 500 has 500 stocks. So you say you take 500. You divide by, you subtract by 20 and divide that into 500, uh, 20 into 500, oh, uh, you know, 480 into 500, excuse me. We have an active, hold on a second, I got to figure out my, we get an active share of 96%. That means it's concentrated, and that means if the concentration of these stocks do well, you're going to do well. You're going to smoke the S&P, of course, the coral area is, if the concentration do poorly, you are too. I don't know what what is American Tower. I have no clue. So let's look at let's go to finance. I have no idea what American Tower is. I presume it's a cell phone company thing. I don't know. Uh, look at that. Uh, Nasdaq up one point two one again. Jeez Louise. Is it AMT? Is American Tower? My Yahoo stuff just does not want to work anymore for these quotes. I think Yahoo is really. 
they're hurting, man. Um, in terms of getting their website situated, because let's go to Market Watch then. All right, hold on just a second, because uh, it takes forever to get a quote on Yahoo, and it always it's just it's a cluster fark. Is it AMT? And let's go American Tower. American Tower. Yeah, AMT right there. As a real estate investment trust, you kidding me? So real estate investment trust, which owns, operates, and develops multi-tenant communications real estate. It offers, it operates throughout Europe, Africa, blah, blah, blah. The Asia property segment refers to operations in India, the services segment. Turn on equity, look at that. They got crazy debt though. Price to book, price to sales, price to cash flow, price to book, 20. <laughs> 60 PE. See, I, I just couldn't buy it. 60 PE. I couldn't do it. I could. Yeah. Oh, it's starting to rain out. Pablo, don't forget, Pablo hits the thing. Um, Pablo uh, barks. Make sure you pause the like button. Total debt to assets, total debt to capital, long term debt to equity. Um, I, I just, I can't, I, I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sure there's a, well, is there a dividend? Will they have a dividend in this guy? I mean, it's a real estate investor trust, you think, right? Let's take a candor. It's up 19% one year. Yield 1.67, so not much. PE 60, earnings per share. Couldn't do it, man. Anyway, um, maybe this is a bet on that 5G. I ah, man, I don't know. I just... Uh, if you're looking for an active performer, you got to go for concentrated, and these guys are going for concentrated. That's a fact. So, anyway, something to think about. I will right, we'll see you guys. Love to hear your comments. Paw the like button.